OK, of course, we've got a competition going on here in New Zealand, and at some point the Rugby Championship is going to go and the Bleeders' Low Cup, which means the Trans-Tasman's got to happen all before that, and the final is this weekend. And what is it? It's the Reds. They're taking on the Brumbies. And these two teams, this is the force, it's not the force, it's the Reds. And it's in Brisbane. And I tell you what, these two teams have played two games, Marshy. Mm -hmm. Remarkable contest. Gone right down to the wire. The Reds got across the line. I think this is a great matchup. We've been hoping to catch up with Michael Checker. He's got into hiding. He thinks he's looking for the Waratahs job. But anyway, uh, this could be an absolute cracker and something we should look forward to because we're playing this team, these teams, very, very soon. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I, what, what I have enjoyed is the, the standard and the style of rugby as well. Like... Look, I, I, I watched it last last year, and um, with the greatest respect to our, our good neighbours across the ditch, it was pretty crap, to be fair. Um, <laughs> but, but, what, but watching it this year, yeah. th they've they've learnt, they've they've innovated, they're playing a different brand, and I think that that's off the back of what Dave Rennie did with the Wallabies, the style that they played. Those Wallabies have gone back into those franchises and said, "Man, we need to change the way we're playing." and their rugby is just categorically so much better this season. They are two very worthy finalists, and it'll be a belt of a final, and then it's going to be bloody interesting, the Trans-Tasman, because they'll compete. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I can't, I can't get a gauge on the difference. Uh, I'm so used to seeing the intensity of ours. I, I, theirs is different rugby now, Marshall, I agree mm. with you. They're playing like the Queensland sides of the 80s. You know, they're throwing it around a lot more. They're getting it wide a lot earlier. There seems to be a higher skill level. So I reckon it's going to be a really interesting final and a really interesting Tran Tasman. I'm looking mm. forward to it. They've been able to blood a lot of young guys throughout this, this COVID. You know, yeah. Australian, that's, what, that's the, the positive out of it for them. They've been able to go out there and, like you say, you, Dave Rennie's implemented stuff where they come together as a whole group and sort of, this is how we're going to play. Yeah. So I think COVID's been a real blessing for them. Mm. Uh, look, he's coming late. Michael Checker. There he is. Standing by. Where is he? Come on, Checker. I mean, uh, we're talking to you, getting ourselves prepared. I think we're getting ready. I want to chat to him. There he is. Hey, Welcome hey, back. Hey. Great to have you with us. Uh, look, massive Boy, final coming on. You're on the sidelines right now. Um, we've seen these two teams go head to head. Are these, these the two best sides in the competition? Oh, yeah, I think so. I think they've shown that over the, in the course of the tournament by the, the various wins they've had and also the way they've played their rugby. Um, they've used different, <clears throat> different ways of, of um, winning, finding a way to win on most occasions. So, yeah, I think, I think it's definitely the final that the, the competition deserves. Check. we were just talking about very hard to get a, a, a sort of understanding of the difference. You would have been watching both tournaments. We believe the Australian Super Tournament's really improved, playing a different style of rugby. Do you think it's going to be more competitive across the Tasman than in the past? Yeah, JK, I think there's a couple of things there, mate. The, I think actually there's a benefit... Um, it, for us, when it comes to coming back to the Trans Tasman competition of having played against each other uh, a fair for a fair amount of time, give the teams a chance to to get a bit of that um, confidence and connection in winning games. I think our fans are more involved as well, and I think it gives a also I suppose the element of surprise too when you come because. Let's say you're, you're playing the Kiwi teams from day one or well, they're seeing you from day one, they're, they're analysing you from day one. Most of the coaches over there probably haven't even been watching a lot of the Australian rugby because they've been focusing on their own tournament. So you get a bit of a chance at the start, I'd imagine, to, to um, hit the Kiwi teams with an element of surprise. Now, there's been a lot of good rugby over in New Zealand, without a doubt. So there's a few things that I see that seem to be very similar and a few things that are very different. Um, and I think how um, how the, the Australian teams start the tournament will really gain, uh, show whether they'll be confident enough to go on and try and compete at the latter end of it. Check. I've got two questions just quickly. The first one, just a yes or no, do you miss, you know, the, the head coach role? You know, you've had sort of some roles with, uh, you know, Argentina and things like that and also with the Roosters NRL. The second part of that, if the Roosters were going to pick an all-black today, who would that be? <laughs> uh, well, you know, I've been doing a bit of the TV work for uh, for Stan and Nine in Australia, obviously, and, you know, I told them I only wanted to stay in the studio because I don't want to go to the games because I miss them too much. 
You know, I, I want to be involved if I'm there. So um, I, what are, the, as being doing those roles in Argentina and Roosters have been the first time ever that I have not been the boss. So it's given me a totally different perspective on uh, it was really actually has been really good for me. I think in that way. Now, yes, I definitely am ambitious and to to return um, to head coaching, and I'm doing a few different things. Lebanese rugby league team. That's been a great experience at a rugby league World Cup. <laughs> um, had some different things there, but you know, I, I, I feel like after the World Cup experience, I needed to develop more, get better, uh, change uh, to end to finally get the goal that I want, and then. Mate, there's a lot of good players over there. I'm, I'm a big fan of the of crossing crossing um, over. I think play, more and more in the future, players and coaches are going to go back and forward across both codes as it becomes, you know, I suppose as more of that happens. And obviously the the player that's being spoken about now crossing over um, in, in TJ, I think he's a he's a really good model for the type of player uh, who can who could. Um, cross over to league and prosper as well and stay while he's still being an excellent rugby union player at the same time. Chet, we would love to speak to you longer, but you were late and we're missing <laughs> you though. We were, we're missing you. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to save you after we're going to try and catch up with you next week so you can give us a review of what happened on the weekend. All right, mate? Hey, thanks very much for joining us. Just run out of time. Always a disappointment. Check so much. Fun. No All right. Apologies for that.